Hello guys, this is uh, Dr. Palne Manikam. In this video, we're going to talk about soy. Whether soy is good or bad, whether soy is causing all these problems or soy is causing so much benefits. Let's dive deep into it. If you think you got anything out of this video, please consider supporting our non-profit organization called Vanna Malagal Foundation, which supports Aishwaryam Trust in Madurai, which helps neurological patients who cannot even move their hands and legs, who cannot even eat, who needs 24-7 clinical care. We are providing the clinical care, doctor support, nursing support, ambulance and nutritional support free of cost. In addition, we also support We Embrace, which is an organization for kids with special abilities kids with autism, kids with developmental delays, everybody has a wonderful atmosphere over here to grow together. Your support means a lot to us. So before even we start this topic about soy, it is absolutely important that everybody knows by this time that protein intake is critical, especially during your eating window. Many people have commented that they have lost weight when they start this intermittent fasting, but it is absolutely critical to know that you should include your protein intake to the normal requirement during your eating window. If not, you will lose your muscle mass as well. So the general requirement is 0.8 grams per kilogram. For example, if you are 60 kilos you should require at least 48 grams of protein per day if you are a non-vegetarian it is a relatively easier target because all the meat products have good amount of protein if you are a vegetarian soy plays a major role in getting you to reach the target of 0.8 gram per kilogram per day my patient Aroke Sami told me that he has been getting protein through shakes then I realized that he is getting mutton from shake Dawood boy I'm a gastroenterologist. I focus on gut health. There are numerous studies in the medical literature right now focusing on plant-based diet, increasing the good gut bacteria in your intestine. I'm not saying that animal-based diet does not increase. It does not increase as much as the plant-based diet. So that's why I've always been promoting palatarian diet, like 80% vegetarian, 20% non-vegetarian. What does it mean to you? There are 21 meals a week, 20% percent of 21 is around three to four three to four meals maximum you can have non-vegetarian the remaining all should be vegetarian per week all my vegetarian friends would be like what will we do for our protein source it is very difficult to include 0.8 gram per kilogram of protein per day please give us ideas that's why we are doing this video on soy there are different types of soy edamame boiled or steamed and seasoned soybeans tofu a soft cheese like food made from soy milk the word tofu sounds like a martial art to fight against people who are telling that there is no protein in vegetarian food. And there is soy flour powder made from roasted soybeans that can be used in baking and cooking. And there are multiple fermented products of soy as well. Miso, fermented soybean paste, tempeh, cake-like product from fermented soybeans, natto, traditional Japanese food made from fermented soybeans. If you eat Japanese natto, all your good gut bacteria will sign an interdisciplinary agreement among them like the NATO. So there are dairy products as well like soy milk, soy cheese, soy yogurt. Soy is considered as a complete protein because it contains all the essential amino acids required in the body. It has been analyzed for protein in quality and has been compared to cow's milk or a egg protein in quality. Soy has been worshipped by vegetarians and vegans because it promotes good bone health, it promotes good gut bacteria, it actually improves the cardiac health and promotes overall health in general by providing the necessary amount of protein intake. If praying to soy baba improves your mental health, eating soy can also improve your physical health. It can be named as soy baba as well. Every soy product has this component called isoflavones which has a slightly higher estrogen hormonal activity which might be a problem in patients especially in women who are actively secreting estrogen during their premenopausal phase. So there was a study that was done like many years ago stating that if you take soy during your premenopausal phase there is increased risk of breast cancer and based on few studies it has also been shown that soy can interfere with the absorption option of thyroxin and that can be a big problem in patients with hypothyroidism let's see whether these two facts are right or wrong 
Can soy protein cause cancer? This concept came from two animal-based studies that was done 20 years ago. It showed that because of the isoflavones having slightly estrogenic activity, it can potentially increase the risk of breast cancer in women. However, a large study from 10 European countries with 335,000 women between 35 to 70 years of age did not show any increased risk of breast cancer at all. Another study just focused on the MR right changes of the breast tissue if you keep taking soy for one year there was no significant difference as well absolutely clear that soy doesn't increase the risk of breast cancer because of this concept people are actually very concerned of taking soy which is an excellent source of vegetarian protein so let's take this out of the picture soya is an another victim of google for causing cancer i need to bail out 11898 food items more from the google because of the accusation of cancer second the soy causes hypothyroidism causes decrease in your thyroxin levels as i said before the main component of soybean is isoflavone this isoflavone definitely inhibits thyroxin which is true but this happens only in the absence of iodine if you don't have iodine in your body if you take soy yes it interferes with the absorption of thyroxin for normal people with no evidence of any thyroid problems at all there is no significant risk of taking soybean this will not increase the risk of hypothyroidism in your case in patients with hypothyroidism when they are taking thyroxin tablets yes there is a case that this soy can interfere with the absorption of thyroxin so what happens you don't have thyroxin level so you're taking thyroid tablets so we just need to make sure that you don't take soy and the thyroid tablet at the same time that is the key if you can split at least two to three hours apart taking your medication the first thing in the morning and three hours later if you take any kind of soy product then there is no interference with the absorption of thyroxin then there is no problem of soy being a detrimental product in hypothyroidism patients and this absorption not only happens with soy it can also happens with coffee happens with high fiber diet and that's why people say that take your thyroid tablet the first thing in the morning and then two to three hours later you can drink your coffee my friend Sarano Kumar thinks that hypothyroidism is concerned with thighs he's under the assumption that the Tamil actor Raj Kiran with the big thighs have actually have a thyroid problem so in conclusion for women the protein content is absolutely necessary especially if you're hypothyroid your protein content is even more important so if you're a vegetarian if you're a hypothyroidism patient don't worry too much about the soy bean intake if you're not hypothyroid it is absolutely okay to take soy milk as a source of protein if you're not hypothyroid and if you're a vegetarian it is completely okay to take soy as one of the source of your vegetarian protein so the third question is can soy protein cause hormonal imbalance in men and women the answer is yes but it is not clinically significant let me explain in men they have found so many studies that increasing the soy content does not increase the risk of infertility does not increase the risk of any other male hormonal problems it has been proven in multiple research studies for men soy is not a big problem in women there are some studies supporting the evidence that this can cause some kind of hormonal imbalance which might lead to some infertility issues which is again not clinically significant but let me give it to them that there is some kind of interference which needs further explanation so in one study they found out that if your isoflavone concentration is more than 40 milligrams per day then it might cause very mild interference in hormonal imbalance but you have to be very practical in understanding this concept it is very very difficult to take 40 milligrams of isoflavones every day you need to take soy for every part of your day breakfast lunch dinner snacks even then you might not be meeting 40 milligrams per day and the key point to this is the amount of isoflavones in the soy product depends upon where it is grown in a study they found out that in canada isoflavones in soybeans has the highest content is two 
2.241 milligrams per kilogram. In USA, it is 3309 milligram per kilogram. In India, it is only 986 milligram per kilogram. So given this data, it is absolutely very difficult to take 40 milligrams per day, especially in India. If you are in a country with a colder temperature, the likelihood of you reaching more than 40 milligrams will happen only if you eat soy every time of the day. Let's observe two minutes of silence for all the isoflavones who lost their lives in the hot weather in Chennai. In conclusion, I repeat that soy is an excellent source of protein. If you are a woman, if you are a vegetarian, it is absolutely important to maintain your protein intake to at least 0.8 gram per kilogram per day, especially during your eating window. For that, soy is an excellent source of protein. One thing you need to make sure that you don't take soy for every single meal. Please include soy as one of the source of protein. Other source of protein could be your nuts, your seeds, your legumes. All your target should be to reach that 0.8 grams with multiple sources of protein on a given day. Again, I'm a big promoter of plant-based diet. So as per Dr. Palitarian diet, 80% of your diet should be plant-based. My friend Sarana Kumar eats mutton curry on a banana leaf and says that it is a plant-based diet because banana leaf is the base it is totally baseless please share this video with your friend who says don't take soy because it will cause cancer don't take soy because it will cause hypothyroidism don't go to Sai Baba temple because they are giving soy over there remember protein is very important during your eating window please write down in the comment section what kind of soy product that do you use I would be more than interested to know one belly at a time it is absolutely important I'll see you in the next video bye, -bye.